War. War never changes. Hey guys, it's Chris with Tabletops and Tentacles here with our first terrain tutorial. This is kind of our Kraken's Craft section of the YouTube channel. And it is the apocalypse outside. We planned on holding off on these until we would gotten in my new microphone, but my microphone somewhere in Kansas has been for a week or two. No idea when it'll get here. And so we're going to make do with what we have, which is how we're doing all our crafts as well. It is pouring rain outside. It's thunder and lightning, so I apologize if this audio is a little less than ideal. The actual crafting video will be better. So in this series of videos, we're going to be making a sequence of terrain, scatter terrain, object markers, maybe some buildings for Fallout Wasteland Warfare, which is a skirmish RPG solo co-op game from uh, Modifius and Bethesda. I love Fallout. I thought it was an appropriate thing to be playing a Wasteland Apocalypse game these days, and it's been a lot of fun. They do make resin terrain for it, but I wanted to make my own from what we have here around the house. So hopefully you'll enjoy it. Uh, the same terrain could be used for pretty much any post-apocalyptic thing, kill zone. Uh, you could use it for a contemporary location and just change the paint scheme up a little bit so it's not radioactive. Uh, just like a simple red and blue barrel with some rusted out would be great for an alley or something like that. They're really easy to make. We just made them with some old PEX plugs, which are the indoor plumbing that are like the PVC pipes, and some paint. So let's get cracking. So I started this build like I do pretty much everything when I'm starting a new project, and that's by finding a point of reference. So I took this little horde zombie from a D&D &D set, since I don't have my game quite yet, and brought it to Home Depot. And just sort of wandered the aisles looking for something that would fit to scale with him. I wasn't sure I was going to make barrels at the time, until I stumbled across these PEX pipe plugs that you use for indoor plastic plumbing. And they are pretty much the perfect scale for waistline barrels. They even have the right number of rings on the outside. Obviously, those little spikes on the side of the barrels need to go. So I just clipped those off. And as I looked at it, I realized that the extra thick ring around the bottom is both a benefit and a negative. It works great from a standalone terrain standpoint because it doesn't tip over as well. But the barrels in Wasteland Warfare and Fallout in particular are always rolling all over the place and in big ugly piles. So initially I tried to sand the outside of that and if you don't plan on getting this base off, a little bit of sandpaper is perfect for just kind of smoothing out the outside base around it where you've cut those spikes off. But I wanted to be a little more aggressive so I got out my Dremel and wearing a pair of gloves and using pliers because I have horrible luck with my Dremel if I'm trying to hold it with bare hands I ground down the outside of it a little bit I also kind of smoothed the tops off a bit and I do think it's a little more aesthetically pleasing but it is more work and I think it's totally optional you could just smooth off the outside with some sandpaper after grinding it I Took some of the somewhat melted plastic off with an old toothbrush and then did a quick sand around the outside with 220 grit. I'm not too concerned about perfectly smooth aesthetics here because we are talking post-apocalyptic rusting barrels with radioactive fluid dripping out. When I was finished with that, I took them and just based them out in a white primer, then white and yellow ceramic coat, uh, like apple barrel craft paint. I didn't film this part, so you'll have to imagine it in your head, but I used the guidelines built into the plug for painting. Then it was time for the fun part. For all of the aging and painting, I used apple barrel craft paint. Super cheap. I think I got these off of Amazon or from one of the local craft stores. The colors I used were Tuscan Red, Jack-O-Lantern, Nutmeg Brown, Antique Parchment, Khaki, Sunny Day Yellow, and Black. And I basically do a lot of mixing around with things. I like to use a toothpick to blend colors together. Oh, I also used a gray, but I don't recall what color it was exactly. You'll also see me here doing tiny label details on the side of the barrels. I did them really rough because I knew I was going to be brushing over a lot of it and I wasn't too 
super concerned about perfect details, but I did a little nuclear waste sign symbol with a yellow paint dab and a ultra fine Sharpie tip. And then I did a little red label mark on them, mostly just to cover up a mold line that was a perfect circle at the top of each of them. So rather than do a light dry brush on things, I find that a little more of a heavy overbrush works really well for this type of aging. And what I really wanted was to kind of age them so that they looked rusty and dirty and crappy looking, but that you could so that you could still see the paint kind of showing through and almost chips, which is always tricky when you're adding over the top of the color. So I go for a heavier overbrush, generally speaking, trying to make sure you get it into areas where the rust would normally form. And it's a little tricky with something small like this because your brush doesn't want to get into the corners without it also getting too gloppy and heavy. So you've got to be a little delicate with it. But I've also found in looking at barrels like this, a lot of the times the part that's sheltered a little bit from the weather doesn't lose as much of the paint. So you can kind of have free reign with this. That's one of the pluses of making fallout wasteland barrels is that you don't have to be too perfect with the paint job. If you plan on using the barrels the way I am, where some of them will be tipped over or integrated into some terrain pieces, make sure you remember to paint the bottom of the barrels. I also filled in the tops of a few of them with just some putty and a bit of paper towel to sort of create a cap on them. There's probably a more elegant solution for that, but I just wanted a few of them to not be open and empty on the battlefield. So I went to town with these with an older brush and all of my dry brushing brushes are ones that I've trimmed back a little bit. I like a stiffer bristle, but it still needs to be soft. So I usually use a synthetic brush and I will trim it back a little bit, then run it across sandpaper for a while to kind of soften the tips of the bristles up. I find that that gives you a little more of a control, especially for this like overbrush style of painting. It gives you that, that stiffer bristle so you can get into corners and things, but you still have that softer end tips for the dry brush effect. So I just kind of went to town on these barrels for a while. At one point or another, I dropped them dramatically because I have big clumsy fingers, but I think they turned out pretty good in the end. With rusting and aging effects, I always work in a very specific order. If they are going to have been painted before they were aged like these barrels, I will start with whatever base color they would have looked like when they were new. Then I build up the rust and aging from there. I usually start with a kind of chestnutty brown. I think it, this was nutmeg brown in this case. And I'll usually mix a little bit of black into it just to give it that real dirty, rusty look. Then I'll start integrating in some reds and oranges. And I always try to mix them with whatever brown I was using beforehand and not use them straight out of the bottle. And then kind of just work from dark to light as far as the rust is concerned. I find that the tips typically want that lightest color. So I'll start with a heavier overbrush and then slowly go into a lighter less loaded brush for each of the lighter colors beyond that. Then finally, finish it off with a little bit of silvery gray at the very, very tips where the metal itself is shown through. After painting, I did something that I probably won't do with my next batch of radioactive barrels, just because I think I'm going to want to wait and see how they're integrated into terrain pieces or if I'm using them standalone. But I took my hot glue gun and I had a green wax stick in it for this. Uh, I They were for some sort of wax seals that we were using for our wedding back in 2006 that I just had kicking around still, but I'd planned on just using regular hot glue, but I happen to have that in the gun. And I just sort of filled some of them, a few of them I put it so that it looked like it was kind of leaking out the sides. Not super, super happy with this effect, so I probably wouldn't do it again. I would wait until it was integrated into the terrain, then add some sort of radioactive goo leaking out. Finally, I gave it all a nice matte base coat so that everything was protected and all of my careful 
crappy aging and chipping wouldn't chip off. And here are the finished products. I think they turned out pretty fun. I'm actually really happy with the two different sizes of barrels, even though just the smaller one is really more screen accurate. I think the little bit of variety is really nice. I think next time I pick these up, I will make sure to get more of them and do some in a more traditional modern terrain style with like reds and blues instead of just radioactive waste. But I think these are a great little addition. They're really quite easy to do in bulk rather quickly. And especially for my first ever terrain that I've worked on, I'm really happy with the way these ended up. I have done a little bit of research into them, and it looks like they are primarily in that Apollo brand, only available at Home Depot. The ones that they sell on Amazon and at some other locations look like they're a different brand and they don't have that perfect three ring setup that the barrels need for the look to be perfect. So it looks like that's your best option as far as that's concerned. I have included affiliate links in the description for the paints I used and a few of the other little pieces of this as well as the game if you want to check out Wasteland Warfare. By clicking on any of those links to buy your stuff on Amazon it helps us out but you still pay the same price that you would have paid if you just went to Amazon regularly. You can also go to our Patreon page and support us over there. It's at patreon.com slash deeply dapper and not only do you help support the channel and help support indie artists as we are working in this weird quarantine time, but you also become a subscriber to our magazine, Tabletops and Tentacles, which is going to be a great geek magazine coming out this month for the first issue. It's going to cover comic cons, role-playing games, tabletop gaming, art, fiction, film, and a little bit of everything else. Again, that's patreon.com slash deeply dapper. Thanks for watching the video, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. There's a lot more to come. Please hit the subscribe button and ring that bell so that you get notifications every time we upload a new video. And if you do subscribe to our Patreon, you get advance notice of our new videos and get to see them days before anyone else does. Thanks for watching, everyone. This is Chris with Tabletops and Tentacles, signing off.